Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm giving this talk in the homeland of the Dakota people. At home, I live on the traditional land of the Duwamish people in a city named after their leader, Chief Seattle. And I support the Duwamish's tribe, Duwamish tribe's ongoing struggle for US federal recognition. So when I tell adults I'm a cartographer, about 80% of the time I get a blank stare in response. It's a fun treat when I, get to find, when I find someone who already knows that term, not here of course, but generally. This may change with the next generation because in video games, a cartographer is an increasingly common character. Today's teenagers are growing up more familiar with the idea that a cartographer makes maps. But when they think of a cartographer, based on their video game experiences, what do they see? I decided to find out. I gathered a list of every video game I could find with the cartographer character. I, co I combed game wikis, watched gameplay videos, and played some games myself. I recorded cart cartographer characteristics, including demographics, outfit, accessories, personality, and game function. First, I'll share the data trends with you, and then I'll showcase some of the more interesting and unusual video game cartographers I found. And I will be sharing my slides after. I am Zana, master cartographer. There will be another cataclysm, and it will make the last seem like the sweetest of dreams. You and I, Exile. Together we shall explore the forgotten recesses of Rayglast. I wish I had a cartography sword. <laughs> so I dug around uh, in all these places, game wikis and everywhere else I could find, um, for all the games where the word cartography or cartographer is used. And here it's, you can see it's graphed over time and it's getting more common. I found 39 cartographers across 21 games dating from 1991 to two, 1994 to 2001. 32 of them were named, something other than just cartographer. Um, so here are the names. Some of them had cartographer as a title in front, which I took off for simplicity. Next, I looked at how important the cartographer characters are to gameplay. 14 of them are important to the game, where you really have to interact with the cartographer in some way to be successful. In 25 of the games, the cartographer is more incidental and you, or optional, and in one game, it doesn't do anything. 37 of the cartographers are NPCs, or non-player characters, and two of them are playable. Then I looked at what role or function the cartographers have in their games. Not surprisingly, most of them are map-related. Um, they either sell game map pieces or reveal locations of treasure. Um, the second most common there is that they award an item or an outfit, um, but usually that's because you've explored an area, so it's again map-related. Um, Ten of them give quests, and seven of them, some, uh, seven others are quest checkpoints. Um, and the four of them are enemies. And I looked at where they were in their game world. Um, 23 of them are stationary in a single place where you can look up on the game wiki where they are, and that's where they are. Seven of them are wandering within a sort of given region. Four of them are at their home or workplace. And then four vary uh, based on where you are in the game. Those tend to be the more important or playable ones. And one of them is unknown. He's missing and is never found. Before I get into the rest of my analysis, I want to mention an exception case, the game No Man's Sky. It's a procedurally generated open world with over 18 quintillion planets. Most star systems have a space station where the traveler, the player, can trade. And all of those have a cartographer sitting at a desk that can sell maps. And the species and gender of these vary in each place, as well as their personality. So there will be some asterisks in my data because there are a lot of permutations in this one game. That's the last one there. That's just a selection. So looking at gender, 21 of the cartographers are male, over half. 12 are female. And three are a specific gender that is neither male nor female. And three of them vary between those, like the ones in No Man's Sky, in three games. Over time, I looked at, I wanted to see how this changes. Um, male and female kind of stay the same over time, but um, more recently there are more non-binary and varied cartographers. In the second chart, I combined the other and the varied. So 
So they're both the green bar there. And I looked at race and species. Um, 17 of the cartographers are humans or something very similar. Seven of them are robots. There are two each of bugs, dark elves, and rakshasas, and then one each of all those other ones listed there. And then, of course, the no man's sky aliens, of which there are several species. I looked at skin color among the humanoid characters, and they all appeared to be light-skinned. Let me emphasize that. It's the clearest finding in my analysis. Um, this lack of representation is a serious problem throughout the video game industry, not just with the cartographer characters. Um, I think every kid should be able to imagine that they could be a cartographer when they grow up. Uh, I was expecting cartographers to be dressed in robes or other ornate clothing, but almost all of them are in are normal clothing for their situation, like they look like the other characters. I also expected most of them to have glasses, but only five of them do, plus one monocle. Uh, the monocle is the cartographer from Minecraft. And then from left to right, there we have Granny from Cardo, Bean from Far Cry New Dawn, Cornifer from Hollow Knight, Rachel Lockwood from Outer Worlds, and cartographer Slipgear from EverQuest. I noted what the cartographers were carrying and what was next to them. I expected most of them to have paper maps and writing utensils, but most were actually empty-handed. Um, most of them have maps and most of them have paper maps. The one difference there is in No Man's Sky, they only have digital maps. Um, and then nine of them have pens and five of them have weapons. Now, let's leave the demographic data dungeon and move on to the next level where I'll show you interesting examples of things I found in the games. 11 of the games I found didn't have a cartographer character, but they had other mentions of cartography, um, things like items or achievements. Here are some of the items I found. These are all the items I found. Um, from the game Wildstar, that's the cartographer's case. From EverQuest, cartographer's ink bottle, cartographer's quill, and cartography binder. And from EverQuest 2, the cartographer's cape. I found three buildings that are called cartography or cartographer. Um, this is the cartographer building from Forge of Empires. It increases happiness in your settlement, allows you to place groups of trees, and which is a, it's a prerequisite for new trade routes, which I guess makes sense. This is the cartographer building from Halo. Um, there's one in each world, and they contain a software program called the Silent Cartographer. This is just one example. They're a little bit different in each one. Uh, and it provides a map that can be used to navigate. Here's what happens when the Silent Cartographer is activated. Pretty cool little 3D effect there. This is the cartography building in Far Cry New Dawn. Upgrading it allows the player to buy maps. That's the cartographer, cartographer there at the bottom of the stairs. And upstairs, you find this rough map inside the cartography building. This is a sort of post-apocalyptic scenario. There's a number of tables in games called cartography something. Um, first, we have the cartographer's table from Minecraft the cartographer's workbench from Guild Wars 2, cartographer's desk from Don't Starve, and cartography tables from Miasmata and Valheim. Here's one more desk. This is the desk of Marcus Talbot, who is a cartographer that is a quest checkpoint in the game Control. Um, all you do is pick up an item here, his ID card, but I like his maps. He's the cartographer that's missing and he's never found. Now I'll highlight a few uh, interesting individual cartographers. In the game Outer Worlds, you're given a quest to kill this cartographer. However, you can complete the quest whether you kill her or not. And if you don't, she'll give you the key that you need in the quest uh, out of her gratitude. Two games have cartographers who seem to be bugs. Loopy, Lupo from Ori and the Will of the Wisps and Cornifer from Hollow Knight. Both of them sell you maps. Um, it's unclear exactly what Lupo is supposed to be, but at least some people think he's an insect and he looks like an insect to me. And Cornifer is likely based on a weevil. In the 1994 game, Uncharted Waters 2 New Horizons, Ernst von Bohr is one of the six playable characters. He's technically blonde, but most of the time his hair looks green, which I appreciate. Um, and his friend Mercator gives him this quest to sail the world and map the world, and here's how Mercator looks in the game. 
I found not one but two pirate cartographers. Both are enemies who try to kill you, uh, but if you kill them, they drop useful items. Uh, they're from EverQuest and Salt. Um, also from the game Salt, this is a cartographer whose name is Hasher, which I thought was clever. He has a unique mechanic as well. While most video game cartographers will, sell, will reveal the map to you in some way, he's not so generous. As the player, you sail around the map and record where islands are. If you find Hasher, he will evaluate your map for accuracy and provides rewards if your map is correct. The last cartographer I want to share is Cardo from a 2020 puzzle game of the same name. She's wandering the world trying to find her grandmother. You can see the game view at the top, I'm wandering around. In the map view, each map tile can be moved and rotated, which changes the land that Cardo is exploring. So the player must solve puzzles that require you to re reconfigure the land in various ways. Um, and as she goes, she finds more tiles. Here are all the cartographers who appear in the games, of uh, the ones that have heads and faces, anyway. Um, I've only included one from No Man's Sky at the end of the third row as a representative for that game. I'll give you a minute to look at those. Here are the games that the cartographers are from. Uh, some of the games have more than one. And then these are the other games that included cartography in, a, in some other way that wasn't a character, um, like the items. And that's all. <laughs> um, so I wasn't going to. Let me. We can all dance. <laughs> that, that's music from Does Uncharted have Waters any too. Questions? Does anybody have any questions? Awesome. Uh, yes. So, yeah, Jim was asking about the, the cartography tables that I found and what, what they did and what they looked like. I only did, did only find those five, um, and mostly they're for crafting. Um, you, you build them to allow you to craft things like maps and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, over there. Yeah, so... I obviously fascinated in the in the demographic breakdown but unfortunately not surprised um did you also come to any sort of conclusion about how they were portrayed in either a self-interested or altruistic kind of light like how does that break down across actually games? um yeah i had um thank you for that question i had a slide that i took out for time um which showed uh, I, I kind of recorded the personality of all of them um, whether they were aggressive or friendly or helpful or just strictly informative. Um, and there was a good mix of each. Some, like the majority were friendly and helpful and informative, but several, even the ones who weren't enemies, were, were kind of grumpy in some way or, or world weary. Um, yeah, I can maybe, bef well, I can pull up that slide and share that separately because I, I had one, but then I cut it. Uh, anything else? Sure. One more quick question. Yeah. I'll be putting my slides in Slack and I can answer further questions there. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kate. Appreciate it.